Welcome to the machine tool design community. Today I am going to cover a very crucial topic that is cutting clearances between punch and die. Guys, if you design the perfect clearance between punch and die, you will get a wonderful die life. You remember as a tool designer, you should remember this very well that if cutting clearance is perfect, your die life will be very good. Okay, so let's study this topic in detail. So cutting clearances, what it is? It is a space between cutting edge of the punch and cutting edge of the die. So if this is a punch and this is the die cutting area, the difference of dimension between the two will be the cutting clearances. And this will accommodate the sheet. Now, I will just study, if the cutting clearance is very small, take an example, the cutting clearance is very small, so you will get a very high punching force, as, as there will be a very less space between the punch and die, the sheet has to accommodate and so that's why the force, punching force will be very high. Second, this as punch will have more stress and that stress will develop over the die. So, this will cause wear and tear of the die and punch. In the result, your cutting edges will be worn out very, very fast. And then you have to again grind and again develop the cutting edge which will reduce the die life. If you provide larger cutting edge, that is the uh, difference between the punch and die dimensions are very high. You, un, you will develop unnecessary burn between the punch and die. That is the, the part that is a blank or the piercing which will be coming out of the die will have very high amount of burn which will ultimately reduce the dimensional accuracy of your part. So, another thing is that as most cutting profiles are not round, so cutting clearance is always specified as per side cutting clearance. It is not provided as full cutting clearance on the profile. Second thing, the ideal cutting clearance varies from 5 to 20 percent. If it is very accurate part, the cutting clearance will be 5 percent and if it is less accurate part, you can provide from 10 to 20 percent. So let's study this with taking an example and calculating the formula with the help of which we will be able to find a cutting clearance between punch and die. So let's study the formula in detail. Let's study with the formula of cutting clearance. Cutting clearance can be calculated with the formula as C into S into tau max root of tau max divided by 10 where C equal to constant. This C is equal to constant that is equal to 0 0.005 for accurate components and 0 0.001 for normal components. So if you have normal tolerance, you can take 0 0.001 as C, that is 10% of 10% uh, of the shared sheet thickness and 0 0.005 for very high accurate components. Then sheet thickness you would be knowing from your drawing and tau wise that is shear strength of stock material Newton for mm square. Now we will be studying a case study for blanking die. Remember guys, for blanking die, well, for a blanking die, the the part this this part is our product, whereas this is slug. So we have we need a product to be accurate. So there will be always a difference of application of cutting clearance in blanking die versus piercing die. So first we will start with the blanking die. So let's apply a formula to this blanking die. So we have considering thickness as 0.5 mm and thickness of 0.5 mm and material equal to stainless steel stainless steel so if we have material equal to stainless steel so we can take tau max standard tau max equal to 400 newton per mm square 
Now let's calculate C. C equal to let's calculate cutting clearance. That is C equal to 0.5 into that is C equal to 0 0.01 into 0.5 into root of how much that is 400 divided by 10. So that approximately comes to 0 0.03 mm per side. Now let's apply to this 0 0.03 mm per side to our dimensions. So now let's take as we have blanking die so our die will be the perfect size and punch will be minus cutting clearances. So my Da, let's die 50 50 so dimensions will be remain 50 50 there will be no change it will be perfectly this and then if we have punch fifty fifty so we can detect punch that is 50 minus 0 0.06 as 0 0.03 is per side so we can apply 0 0.06 that comes approximately 49.94 and same 49.94 so what we have done is we have kept the die as the ideal size and reduced punch with the uh, cutting clearances and now we the same concept we will apply for piercing die. So regarding piercing die, now the part which is going to fall is going to be slug and this part will be our real product. So here formula will be same, cutting clearance will be same, only the punch size will be 50-50 length breadth and die size will be length equal to 50 plus 0 0.06 that is equal to 50.06 and breadth equal to 50.06 so remember guys only this will be the difference in between the piercing and blanking die so you have to be very clearful regarding very you have to be very clear regarding what die you are designing is it piercing die or a blanking die so keep this in mind and go ahead with all your designing calculations from this. So you, you will be able to develop a different design uh, concept over this. Okay guys, if you like my video, please hit subscribe my button so that whenever I release new video, you will get a notification via email.